We're going to land and we're going to be going to a beach and exploring the old clubhouse for the second time. Do you know Down where we are? We're in the berries. What city? Town? Um, <laughs> Great Harbor. Great Harbor. Great Harbor Berries. We dingied into the marina in Great Harbor through a cut that's been blasted through the rocks. Once you're inside the harbor, it offers really great all-around protection from weather. The marina is tucked at the very end of the harbor where we could tie up our dinghy for the day. After walking through the marina, we went across the street with our friends and we took the path up the hill to explore the old abandoned clubhouse. We are a family of five from Texas who sold everything to live full time on our 1987 Marine Trader Tradewinds 47. We have three boys, Carter, Chase, and Caleb. We also have two cats aboard, Cheddar and Tiger. For two years, we have enjoyed cruising, exploring, beautiful sunsets, loads of family fun, and brotherly bonding. We also enjoy exploring the water, snorkeling, and diving. In the Florida Keys, the Bahamas, and who knows where to next. We want to say a special thank you to all of our patrons. In the late 1960s, a $38 million investment project was started in the great, quiet, central private Berry Islands. The central building, a large grand clubhouse where the Hollywood elites, rich and famous, would relax and enjoy rounds of golf, a Manhattan by the luxurious pools and events where they dress to the nine. It now lays in ruin. These halls were once graced by the elite Rockefeller clan, the infamous Rat Pack, including Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. It wasn't a hurricane or natural disaster that caused all the damage, but rather years of neglect and abandonment. It isn't clear when the clubhouse saw its last ball gown or heard its last note, but it is clear, it will never be the same again. We're gonna go do some snorkeling and see if we can't find some conch and maybe some uh, something we can spear, right? Mm-hmm. So we're packing on lunch. We got uh, sandwiches and bars and drinks. More sandwiches. Yeah, Carter takes like three of everything. Yes. And uh, yeah, snorkel gear. So we're gonna load up our new uh, high field and which we love. Mm -hmm. I, we've been using it for four or five days now, and it is awesome. Yeah. It's just so much nicer than a ten-year-old dinghy. Gets everybody up on plane. Mm -hmm. It just it's lovely. Cats inside. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Saw them both, gave them both a little pet. Had to say sorry to chatter. Uh, Chris has dove down a few times to try to find some fish or places to spearfish. Uh, it's a lot of seabed, seagrass, so we're going to try some conking instead. So what we do is we throw someone in the water with a line, and then as I drive, he'll raise his hand and say, conk. And then he dives down and grabs it. And then if it's legal, we keep it. If it's not legal, we put it back. We go and conk it! Yeah! Hey, come here, guys. This is the other conk. This is the kind you don't want. Come here. This is a bigger version I just found you that was dead. This one's alive. Let me see. Those are not good eating. They're the only ones we When you put 
the back, make sure they're face down so they can eat stuff, okay? How deep is it? Six feet, five feet. Pretty good day today between us and our buddy boat. We got six conk. So um, to clean them, you got to punch a hole up here and then slip a knife in and then disconnect from the shell and then you just pull them out. So my understanding is it's one, two, about the third um, row in. You can use a hammer. You can also use another conk. Imagine how painful it is for the conch. Like having a knife sticking at your butt. <laughs> I'm just trying to disconnect him from his shell. Oh my gosh, that's blood. He, you made him bleed. <laughs> you do it right, you're supposed to just slip right out. I guess you didn't do it right. Oh, I think it's his eyes are stuck on the wall. His eyes aren't stuck. Yeah, his eyes just got in stuff. I can feel it release that time. Ugh. That's a conk. His eyeballs and his mouth. His What's the meat part that you eat? The meat's going to be this muscle right in the middle here. I'm going to skin him basically and there'll be a white chunk of meat left over. That's what you get. That was a smaller conk. But um, you just basically cut away everything until you get the white meaty part. I tossed together onion, tomato, green and red bell peppers and added some chopped conch that had been soaked in lime juice to make a conch salad. I am smashing this for conch fritters because they need to be like paper thin. And then you just bread them and then that's how you make a conch fritter. Keep going. You're doing great. We'll take our pounded conch. That Caleb did. Egg and milk mixture. Panko breadcrumbs. And this one. Fry it until it's golden brown. Here it is, nice and crispy. Good Friday morning to everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Talking from Our Aft. Because that's what we do. So, this week we're going to talk about two topics. Number one, in this week's video, you saw us um, conking. conking. And so we're going to talk about fishing and our family experience with allergies on a boat and internet. Caleb, our youngest, has fish allergies. He's allergic to just about everything in the ocean, um, which is sad because he's the one that would love to try and eat everything from he the ocean. He loves to fish and conch. Yeah. yeah. He loves it. 
So uh, we found this out yet by accident a couple years ago while we were in the Florida Keys. Um, had them tested. So um, yes, we carry EpiPens on board as well as lots of Benadryl and other stuff. Yep. Um, it's interesting though, as much as he's allergic to fish and all kinds of stuff, he's not allergic to conch. The kid mm -hmm. loves him some conch. He loves to find it, pound it, eat it. He likes the conch fritters a lot. That's yep. his favorite. Um, and lobster and scallops. Go figure. Can't eat shrimp, yeah. but can eat lobsters. Don't know how that works. So. But um, so that's just one thing that uh, we always have to be cautious of, and that's why we don't see us do a ton of fishing because the actual fish. Uh, if we get oils and skin pieces and whatnot yeah, on the and boat. And those scales flop around everywhere. They do. So it's tough for us to actually fish from our house. It would be better if we had like a center console that we'd fish yeah. and we could clean fish on that kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, but it's okay. Yeah, we do still fish, but it is... Um, Very limited. We have to be prepared ahead of time so that we've got like all the cleaning supplies, bleach and everything ready. So once we catch the fish and um, chop it, how do you say that? Clean it clean it then um, it. you know then we're ready to clean it up real quick and Caleb knows he knows uh, how to take care of himself so he knows where the EpiPen is he's well aware he watches his own um, body and how he's reacting yep. so he's he's and for those that. for those of you that have never had conch uh, you got to try it I know when it comes out of the shell it's gross looking it doesn't look great and um, but it is just a nice firm piece of meat that um, doesn't have a ton of flavor. Yeah. So whenever you are cooking it, it's whatever you're seasoning it with. That's that's where your main flavor is going to come from. It doesn't taste fishy or seafoody or anything like that. So definitely something you should try. When we first saw Kong, the very first time you pulled it out in Bimini uh, two years ago. Yeah. I was like, I'm never eating that a day in my life. Again, that is absolutely disgusting. But then, you know, if you're fishing people and it's there's just something to be said about finding your food and making your own food and then eating your own food, like straight from the land and the sea. It's really, yep. um, I like it. So. Let's talk internet. Um, we, in the Bahamas, there's two carriers for uh, local stuff. Now you can bring your own device. Mm -hmm your international plan google fi any of that kind of stuff that. that that stuff works here as well um we, we like to use the local internet yeah we found that the uh, like especially for data we get a better um we feel like we get more bang for a buck per mm -hmm. what, gigabyte or megabyte mm -hmm. or whatever it is um so we use there's two companies one's called btc they were kind of the original and now there's another one called alive alib um, interesting enough, they, they're different as far as their plans. BTC seems to be more like cell phone based, yep. um, have a little bit of everything through a phone with a chip. They don't, we found they didn't have great, um, hotspot plans yeah. Yeah. versus a live. You can go and you can get a box from them. Looks like this, not very big. I think it's cost like a hundred bucks, $99. Yep. And then you buy a data plan and you prepay for it all prepaid yep you get an app on your phone and you can update they call it top up you can add minutes or add data or add plans um i think we bought a 200 gig gig plan for 140 dollars yeah and that's good for 30 days if you don't use it in 30 days it expires mm -hmm. and then if um i believe if you need to add more you can that being said they, they say it's 200 gig, but then they, they say it's unlimited as well. So yeah. I think that means that if you hit the they 200 gig, no, they throttle it or slow it down to like it. 128 kilobytes a second or something like that. Um, but it's fast enough we're able to stream through our Xbox and watch our streaming services. Um, Amazon up, Prime, Disney yep. Plus, all that we can still use. Upload um, videos for YouTube, um, surf the internet reasonably fast. Mm -hmm. um, it, there are points where it's slower and points where it's faster. I think in the harbors with a lot of boats mm -hmm. and a lot of people using a lot of data, it, it kind of chokes. There's not enough bandwidth, right? Yeah. But when you're just in a smaller area, that that's, seems to be working fine. So, but two other things I wanted to talk about. So this time when we got to the Bahamas in Bimini, it was harder to find 
um, because I think that the store was overwhelmed with how many cruisers there were and they weren't prepared for that. So we actually didn't get internet until we got all the way over to the Berry Islands. Yeah. So the, um, the BTC store is real easy to find in Bimini. Mm -hmm. The Alive store is like a, a oh. private store. Like it's a guy that just partners with them. I don't know what you call that, a, a representative or something. Yeah. But the authorized representative, but he didn't even open. <laughs> we stood there for an hour and waited for him and he never showed up. So um, That's common. That, that's not an uncommon thing. The one thing we did learn is we had this plan before and I thought I could just go back to my app and pop up. If you don't use it for a year, they automatically shut the, serve, the number down and you have to get a new card mm -hmm. to add. So we're using the same device we had from a year ago, but it's got a new chip inside of it, a new SIM card. Yeah, we had to get a new chip, which we actually got at a liquor store <laughs> in... The berries, the berries because he was the representative rep. yep so it's amazing you can just ask around town googling and doing that doesn't really do anything you got to just show up at the dock like hey where's your live store well you called alive and they said no we don't have any stores in the berries at all yeah and then we just happened to be talking to the dock master when we dingied up and he was like oh yeah let me call george or whatever and he's like go to the liquor store no no no, no, no. he gave me he called somebody and they didn't answer. So okay. he gave me his number. So I called him. We started walking around town and talking to other people. That's right. And then I talked to someone else. I said, you know, we're there's a live store. And he says, yeah, it's next to the liquor store. And I went down there. It wasn't next to the liquor store. It was the liquor store. Yeah. And it wasn't the same guy the dock master was calling. So what this gentleman yeah. that, that runs the liquor store does is he buys these SIM cards from Alive. Mm -hmm. And then you pay him. And then he sends an email it over. yeah because they're all in his name and then he transfers them over to to your name yeah uh it takes about 24 hours to get in your name but it, it works it works great um but he's got the boxes and devices right there so uh another thing i wanted to mention though uh the second thing is because we're using the local bahamian internet it actually causes some things from our american data not to work so for instance on amazon prime we are considered out of country and so there's actually a lot of videos we are unable to watch yeah. we can only watch what's and, available and in foreign countries it's got to be something to do with the licensing or something like that um same thing with pure Flix. a lot of the pure Flix stuff doesn't work yeah we have an app uh pure Flix. it's family friendly videos really great but it's um none of it works yeah so we can't access anything because we're in a foreign country uh, we don't know why or how. That's all like techie nope. stuff we're over not, my head. We but haven't into them yet. Also, some of our DVDs won't work because they're coded for the U.S. only. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of weird. So, uh, so there is that, and that's why I think some people still use their IPN from America and Google no, Fi and all they, that. They get a VPN, not an IPN. IP, VPN, thank yeah. you. So if yeah. you do have a VPN and you run a VPN, then your yeah. all your stuff thinks you're in America still. And then all the thing, everything works like normal. And that's a very common thing for people to do now. Um, we we have discovered um, through talking with cruises that it seems like a VPN does use more data. I yeah. guess the way it works, for some reason, they feel like mm -hmm. they chew through more data using a VPN than, than we chew through. And we're not working. This is just a pleasure cruise. Yeah, so and we don't mind it. having to say, oh, sorry, no, we can't do that tonight. Because we're here to enjoy the Bahamas. We're not here to just sit and watch our TV all day. So We, we kind of do that as an evening thing when it's dark or um, bad weather days where it's just mm -hmm. kind of not nice to get off the boat. That's when we'll do the, the tech or yeah. the, the videos. Um, the, what else I was going to say about the internet? So, oh, I, I would try next time. I haven't told you this, but I would see if I could get a live, like if I was going to come back. Uh -huh. I might see if they'll let me pre-order a SIM card and like mail it to me in the States. Oh, interesting. I don't know if that would work or not, but that would... I bet what you have to do is just get one of the local's phone numbers and call him. Call him. That's how it is. That's how it is everywhere you go. You just call the local guy or WhatsApp the local guy and he'll take care of you. So it's it's not doing business like in the United States. But their headquarters for uh, Alive is in the Nassau. Yeah. So um, I'm sure they got somewhere. I'm sure do. they can do that. But that was just one thought. Now, I don't think you have to buy their device either. If you have an unlocked device, um, you can just put a SIM card into your... Because we did that with our cell phone last year. We had yeah. a BTC cell phone, and then we ended up with a live hotspot. Like I said, the BTC ones, we just didn't find any great hotspot uh, services. They just it wasn't really Their plans weren't really set up that way. So that's why we find a live for us works better here. Yep. But I uh, hope that helps. Those are just some of the things we've learned by doing this. 
and um, you know, feel free to shoot us a question or comment. We'd love to hear from y'all. Yep. If there's something you'd like us to talk about from our aft, uh, please, please let us know. Again, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And remember, enjoy the journey. Thank you.